I was really overwhelmed in the beginning. I feel like these people don't really care about me. Like, who the fuck is this bitch? Why did she get this? Why did he pick someone who's not famous? I have this amount of time on the stage to show someone who I am, and that's this pressure. Tell me how this is supposed to go, cause I ain't never really been in love before. So now you know, now you know, we can go knocking on heaven's door. If we don't try, then we'll never know. And I wanna know, could you be loved? You like it? Yeah, a lot. We're in my apartment in downtown Los Angeles at the 931 building. 931 is a pretty cool place, a building of all lofts and artists. And a lot of my mixtape has been inspired by that. Do you guys like the original better? I like the new one. I think the original has more magic. This is the first project I've ever released. I'm just so excited to play this music that I've been working on for so long. And then once I hear the verses, I have to figure out what I'm gonna do around them. We work a lot of hours. I'll be like, okay, Dan, let's go sleep for a few hours. I'll see you at 10 a.m. <laughs> and then he'll knock on my door and I'll literally just roll out of my bed, unlock it, open it, walk over to the mic, sit down, put the headphones on and be like, let's keep going. Today's been pretty cool because we announced the Bieber tour. It kind of came out of nowhere. I was lying in bed and my manager, Olivia, called me and she's like, Max, are you sitting down? <laughs> I was like, Olivia, stop, I can't handle anything. I was like, what? And she goes, Bieber wants you to open for him for his whole tour, <laughs> five months. It was surreal. I was like, what? Called my parents. First thing my dad said was, are you even getting rest? My name is Moxie, and I'm here to welcome you to the Justin Bieber Purpose Tour. Make some fucking noise! Need you to have a little fun with me on this next song. It's called Could You Be Loved. My voice isn't in shape. You know, I can sing really, really soft in the studio, but now I want to project more and just want to get it all in my body. So it's just muscle memory and kind of have to learn how to perform in an arena. <laughs> If you come too far, you're out of the lighting system, mm -hmm. you're into the sound system, mm -hmm. you're making a mess. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We gotta honor the lighting system and the sound system. No talking on the set. I'm so sorry. Now you know, now you know. That one again? Dan. The past two weeks have been like serious boot camp for me. I'm just excited. We are at my alma mater, Columbia University. I would put in 20 hours and I was like, it would be so much easier to put in 20 hours towards music. I felt like I was suffocating. And I explained it to my parents and I started focusing on music more. And I ended up getting a chance to go to LA, got a record deal soon after that. This is where I came to drop out. <laughs> When I decided, it was just a relief. I knew I was doing the right thing, and I had never looked back since that day. Today is the day the mixtape came out. Doesn't even feel real. I hope people downloaded it that are gonna be here. <laughs> the making of 931, that whole nine months, was probably my favorite time of my life thus far. It was like magic. Like every day was pure magic. Being an artist, sometimes you get blocked from yourself and you don't even know why. You're like, oh, I want to create it like this, but I don't know how. Or I want to create it like this, but the music industry is telling me to do this. That shit's really hard. But 931 is so special because it shaped so much of my confidence during that time. So I was about to go on stage at the Staples Center and I ran into my idol, Kanye West. 
Scooter says to him, Kanye, this is the girl I've been telling you about, Moxie. And I just remember walking away from them, about to go on stage, and my best friend grabbing my hand and saying, God is real, God is real. <laughs> Music was my biggest inspiration in life. So when I realized that some of these girls, even if it's just 10 of them, are looking up to me, I had a huge moment where I was like, there's a deeper purpose. I started my set, and I just saw all these mouths moving with me. And they were all singing like all the songs with me. And it was the first show where that happened. That was really cool. accepting and loving and they made me feel so good and the sound was good, everything. Hi. Yeah, I saw myself in a lot of these young girls and I was like, I can do something positive for their lives. So many young girls are afraid to actually be themselves because we're fed so many different things on what's cool, what's pretty, what's acceptable. I was a 12 year old girl once and I try to think back to how I felt and what I was going through at that time. If someone gave me a little bit of inspiration, I know that would hold me over for a long time. I feel love for like all of these girls so much. They are the reason I can do this. Yeah. I will. <laughs> all right. I'm so fuzzy from that show, honestly. Me too. Oh, it was so awesome. You just like, I could feel that you had fun. I had so much fun. It was so. I opened my mouth. Electric. I can't explain the way. Every single girl was singing the lyrics. And like, Fox, I was like, how do you even know who I am? <laughs> so, five months ago, I had finished my first project that I ever released. Nine through one. I'm gonna take it down a little right now. Five months later now, I'm about to play my hometown, New York City, Madison Square Garden. I feel good. I'm excited and sad. I feel like I'm always sad when things are over. I've learned so much about performing and just about myself as an artist. I'm excited to work on this new music, but sad because I'm gonna miss performing every night, miss meeting new people every night. Some nights I would hate my performance. I would think that I was being like a shell of myself, maybe out of fear, maybe out of exhaustion. I felt like I wasn't good enough and I definitely wanted to quit. I was scared of failing. But I think being on stage every night really takes that away from you because you cannot have a shield up when you're on stage or else people won't feel it really. You need to give your all because people can feel when you're being honest or not. And that's what I'm taking out of this tour more than anything. <laughs> Ten bottles of water, organic dates, organic blueberries, organic avocados, organic limes, organic bell peppers. It's not a diva rider. I just need my food. Like, that's how I'm going to live. 